Thank you, Marius and James, for joining in on the Twitter space with Mintgate. I just wanted to, like, yeah, I know that we have been in talks for a while now. I just wanted definitely to learn more about your background and you know, what's really the mission of Book Vaults. Okay, sounds good. So, yeah, so, so I'm James Factor speaking. Um, I'm a publishing director for an indie publishing house um, by day and um, yeah English lit creative writing so been in the publishing world for about five six years now and um, just looking to expand into the NFT world as well yeah and so James and I are actually friends from like high school so we've known each other for what, close to 20 years now well, more than 20 years um, and we're also flatmates, so it's quite it's it's quite cool to set up a set up a project and a business together. So my background is more um, tech and business. So uh, I've been I've been in the kind of tech startup world for about five six years now. Um, so it's a nice coming together. Yeah. How did you guys both get into the blockchain space? So I I think the I think it was before even the blockchain. Um, what I mean, what we realized is is more, you know, the problem we started off to solve was more from the kind of author and the traditional publishing point of view. Um, and then blockchain just kind of seemed to be the perfect solution for it. So maybe the good place to start is actually, you know, like what the problem we're trying to solve. And then like, you know, <laughs> once you've actually got that problem in front of you, the blockchain just seems to be the perfect solution for it. Maybe, maybe James, James, this is James's space, so he knows it much better. Yeah, sure. So, um I think yeah. I mean, with this, with authors at the moment, I think um, obviously Amazon is a big player in in the ebook and the and the print space, the print on demand. And I think that at the moment, authors are obviously very dependent on Amazon. And when people think of ebooks or digital books, they just think about Kindle Unlimited, um, you know, pages read, streaming. And I think all authors really feel actually that the writing that they're doing is sort of being undervalued at the moment in the business um, advances, even from the traditional publishers, you know, advances are, are way, way down from what they were even 10, 20 years ago. And a lot of authors don't even make out those advances once they sign for, for a publishing house. So combining that with, I guess, royalty rates, which are, you know, with print, it's about 10% and in, in ebook, it, it can be a bit more, but generally um, I think authors feel that they're not getting their fair share. So the blockchain was great because it was addressing this kind of wild west world of, of digital publishing where you could download a book for basically free. And this is a great solution because authors can put their work out there and protect it and have a great relationship with their readers and speak to them and offer them something that no one else can get. So it's sort of reversing that trend of, um, of you know, access to everything and really trying to reclaim that space for authors to to do some exciting exciting work in, you know, not just their writing, but they can enhance different aspects of their worlds. They can include illustrations. They can do interviews, audio. I mean, there's a huge amount of potential out there, but it all starts, it's all based around this idea that readers want to feel like they're supporting the authors they love. And the best way that they can do that is to have an author who's offering a select few nft tokens for their work so if there's a hundred or a thousand or however many it is if they own one of those tokens um they're going to feel a great connection to the author and the author's going to get that 80 percent royalty rate right directly to them so it's a really great solution to both of those issues as sort of starting point in in the whole territory yeah, what I really what really strikes me as interesting as you mentioned, like the a book NFT almost enhances a book. So in your in your opinion, and also you mentioned you know, a like authors can you know, offer audio illustrations. So do you think like the book a book NFT actually has a different definition than just like a, a book that we normally kind of see? For sure. I mean, like James and I disagree on this, but I, I like to think of an NFT book as an augmented ebook. So, you know, it's not just about the actual print, but it's about everything else which can go around it. And it's also in terms of, you know, like what types of packages you can create as well. It doesn't just have to be one commoditized, you know, product. It actually becomes 
you know, not only an amazing thing which you can consume, so like an amazing piece of literature, but then like all these kind of like, you know, digital first editions with special like little swag packs, like you said, like, you know, the map, the illustrations, the character list, like there's so many, also like we're thinking like, you know, why not including Zoom calls with the author? Like there's so many ways which you can push it. And it's really all about increasing proximity between the author and, you know, their fans or their reader base as well. Yeah, I think like from how you're describing it, I really like the idea of the reader actually be part of different, like part of the community. I know like I grew up really loving to read books as well and the community that I could be part of is book clubs. But I think this is kind of more than just book clubs. Like what else do you think book NFTs, which like what else, how else do you think like book NFTs will mean for readers. Like what, what, what do book NFTs, what do book NFTs mean for readers? Yeah, so, so I mean, like before we kind of go into the social aspect, like at its really at its real core, it's just all about that proximity between the author and the reader because you know it's basically the author which is selling directly to their fans and actually creating that instead of all these gatekeepers taking up like ninety percent of the of the business or even marketing the books like right now authors are becoming so smart at engaging with their audiences you know kind of marketing to their audiences and this basically gives them a channel to interact with them directly so you know right now it's just basically you know at its very core it's just a token and then an asset behind it but like you know on either end of that it's basically just a reader interacting directly with the author and then if you can increase the conversation the social aspect down the line as well like that's where it becomes so, so powerful. I think just Jennifer on, on what you were saying about it being like a different, you know, format that we shouldn't really think of it as ebook or print in a way is that I think it can really kind of integrate itself into the publishing industry in a, in a way that doesn't really cannibalize anything. Like we're talking about um, the issues that Amazon has, and we all know that there are issues, but you know, it, it does a good job as well. Like it gets more writing out there um and it promotes stuff but i think the way that nft could work is is in a way things like kind of pre-order for a print edition that um doesn't clash with the print book or you know if a publishing house doesn't can't afford to do a print run which is you know a lot of books get pulped and there's quite a lot of waste with that it's something that can kind of slot into these different spaces as well so it's yeah it's really exciting it's it's not really I think it's more similar to print actually than ebook in that way, because it's kind of offering a commodity and um, and a special kind of edition that we haven't really seen before. And I don't think I don't think it's going to um, to destroy. You know, we don't want to destroy print or, or ebooks. We just want to offer this closer connection that the that authors and readers seem seem to have and and to grow that. Yeah, that's really fascinating. Like you're mentioning how like the book itself, like there be be different editions um, of a book. So I guess like how, what's your, as like an NFT book publisher, what's your role and how are you guys different than a traditional publisher? I think, I mean, to start with, I think what we want to do is really um, speak to the indie or, uh, in the author market initially i think that's that's the way to begin it because you know they're the ones that are um producing work kind of on their own and they're doing a, a lot of work to get their books off the ground in that space and, and also they they are very savvy with the digital marketing sides of of publishing you know and in, even indie publishers as well you know smaller publishers uh are much more versatile and adapt at really responding to these trends. So I think we would position ourselves, you know, predominantly as the, you know, the publisher and we would bring in um, authors who are keen to do this and create partnerships through that and start to grow um, that platform for them to, to, uh, to advertise their work and to, and to have the entities available on. And then um, from there, we just want to, to keep enhancing that platform. If, if I can jump in as well, like for us, it's, it's almost a two-step problem. So the first one is enabling these indie, or like just indie basically means independent publishers or independent authors. So these independent authors to publish 
on like through this new technology on this new platform and you know down the line we kind of see this is like you know we don't want to be the gatekeeper in this industry like we want to kind of create a format where we empower any sort of author to publish on the blockchain and you know down the line really where we want to focus on is also the experience for the reader so how can we create a whole ecosystem where readers can consume you know these kind of new formats like digital books you know the maps where everything kind of comes together and basically have like this augmented book platform with like nfts being a huge part of it does that make sense yeah that does yeah definitely like does um definitely like does make sense it's like the other question that i also had as well uh, is like I know that there is like people think I know as books as you know a public good, um, or some people might argue that you know some of the classics like the first classic that you guys published, um, Robin Crusoe is like a public do- is in the are in the public domain. I think like why should authors make this move um, and work with you guys or you know mint like create like eat like book NFTs? I think yeah, it's a good question. I mean, I think there's there's two sort of different strands to that answer i think on the classic side that you were sort of alluding to i think you know as i was saying before you know our aim is to not like destroy uh, easy access to some of these editions that that are there if people want that you know um i think what we want to do with with the classics really is just to try and give um these books a kind of new lease of life and like a new makeover and encourage you know collaboration on them to start with and we've we've done that with uh with luke hesbar our um our designer for the robinson crusoe cover and you know we we don't want to shy away from that whole world because we're aware obviously that you know art and music have, have really made leaps ahead of us and ahead of the publishing world so we want to see really what we can do in that space and try and combine those worlds of artwork and and illustration and and see see what the possibilities are and you know who knows in the future i think it's a great way to also just introduce academic discussion on these classics um reevaluating them you know what's their context today what how do we how should we read a text like that now and um we can get um you know young academics involved to to give prefaces to these works and get them to be part of the collaboration so i think that on the on the classics um public domain work that's what we really view as the future. And then with, as we were saying, you know, with, with authors who, I mean, why would, would they do their next work with us? For example, I think I've said, you know, it's not trying to, uh, we're not trying to limit them from doing other things as well if they want to, but I think it'd be really exciting to see one day an author do their work entirely in this, in this format. Um, We've seen recently, I think Salman Rushdie is, is announcing his new book is coming out on Substack. Um, which is a sort of newsletter platform. It's getting a lot of subscribers and he's felt restricted for a long time, I think, in what he can say and and discuss and how he reaches his readers. And I see no reason why entities can't do exactly the same thing and and actually enhance it a lot more than just being, not to dismiss Substack, but just more than just a newsletter that comes out every week. We can can add everything we've said to, um, to an NFT token and build on that. Yeah, I think that that's like the possibilities of um, adding unlockable content, which I know that you guys have like, also like delved into. Um, has is I think really adds the possibilities of what authors you know can like what authors you know can do with their work. And also one thing that you also had kind of touched upon is the possibilities for collaborations too, right? Like definitely can see an author and illustrator kind of working together and releasing works together. And as a result, um, creating, you know, an NFT that you can lock like all that content into one NFT. For, sh- for sure. I mean, like, you know, it's something which we see a lot in the art world, in the fashion world, like even in brands, you know, that kind of like cross pollinization of ideas and, you know, like different artists and different creatives getting involved and, you know, once again, this is just a new medium and there's just so many ways which you can push it and get different, like even different authors collaborating on a piece of work, for instance, together. Like, how can we push the form, 
now, how can we push the concept of what a book is? Like, I think this is something which we can really start thinking about and exploring as well. So really cool, like artistic medium as well. Not just for like existing books or replicating an existing media, but also creating new new formats. Yeah, I think that's like really an interesting perspective is, you know, NFTs can create like a new, ultimately turn a new, turn books into a new format. Yeah, I think, and also like we haven't discussed video really at all either in this, um, and how that can interplay with with enhancing, like Maris was saying, you know, what pushing what a book is or what a book is going to be in the future, and what what the ultimate medium is going to be that that's the best way to tell a story. You know, we don't, we definitely at the moment, obviously, we're doing you know the written word, and we want to make that. Um, look as great as possible when we produce these but the future is yeah for sure to have you know video artists and people come in and and offer their interpretation of an author's work and and work through things that way because you know the the cover it's always been the case that the cover design for any book really is is so crucial to selling it in in publishing and i think that if you could come up with a format which obviously people love the visual elements of books already. I think if you can add several different visual effects to a book that can sell it as well, um, I think that's really exciting. And I think that's the kind of direction that it's moving towards anyway. So it'd be great to be part of, you know, building that from the start. You guys actually just recently launched your first uh, book NFT and it does have a really good visual behind it. I was very curious when you first launched it, what were some aspects that you thought about incorporating to um, increase the possibility of you know, it being sold? Well, I, I think I think the the first thing is just as you mentioned, so it's, it's just the artwork and the fact you know that we collaborated with. Uh, this is an also also an amazing thing about the NFT space, just how collaborative everyone is. So, Luke, who's the designer, and like he's been amazing. He's taught us so much about the NFT space, and like honestly, like it to have a you know a little video, a little animation like that, which looks so good for the book. Like that's that's the first thing. In terms of after, you know, like. Um, so we mentioned about different different types of add-ons which we could have you know whether it could be academic academic um academic inputs on it you know a little um a, a map and it's also something which we see is you know it's just because we kind of create it once we meant like the yeah the, that format can evolve as well so what we it can chop and change the actual like content within it it can chop and change we can add things to it we can make it evolve it can be like every week it, it can have something a little bit different added to it so that's also that's also part of what we find so cool about this format. Yeah, I think you actually know James. I think you, um, James, Marius. Actually, you cut off just one second. But there, could you just repeat? Um, it's like the first part that that you said. Yeah, no, I, I was just saying like one of the things which is which which has really like amazed us about this space is just how how collaborative it is. And you know, for instance, I was, I was, we were mentioning Luke like how how easy it is to get to you know to, to kind of meet new people in this space to work together to try new things to like test different formats out and for us you know coming from like quite traditional industries it's been such a breath of fresh air um and you know like a big part of this book as well let's be honest it's just like the big novelty of it is also the cover design you know the fact that it looks amazing it's kind of like animated you know for us that in itself is just a huge like i can't think of many other men like you know digital for or like pdfs or even kind of like written format with even just a video cover um so i think that's already one of the first like you know first of its kind sort of thing yeah you made a good point it's something that i actually didn't realize until you had mentioned everyone can actually go to book vaults's twitter and actually see the cover uh see the link of the robin robinson crusoe um NFT and it actually is more so like a GIF or a moving cover. And that's really interesting because I'm thinking like you can even bridge into other NFT formats such as a video and audio. Almost you can create like video books, audio books, or previews of the, of the book and then have the actual written portion of it as an unlockable content. Yeah, that's right. I think like it's, it's very much up to the author what they 
what they what their vision is and if they'd ever wanted to get involved with um, an artist to discuss their work, then they can do that. But then again, you know, we, like you just said, Jennifer, that's, we can include unlockable content that isn't available, for example, in, in future editions in the ebook or the print version of it. Um, and I think that that's, you know, it's not detracting from the print or ebook that comes out. I think it's just saying to fans, you know, if you want to have this, this extra bonus, uh, material um whether it be a sort of a hidden chapter or a glossary or something else that the author wants to to add then then it can be as simple as that you know but before nft technology it's never really been possible to do something like that before and to enhance stories in that way and, and to create that uh, connection between between fans and an author yeah, I really think I love the idea of just enhancing the story, you really giving readers, you know, a different connection to the author. I know that we have a couple of new listeners um, who just came in recently. Marius and James, uh, would you be able to just, you know, give a high level of what is Book Vaults, what you guys are working on, and what problems you guys are facing again for our new listeners? Yeah, sure. So, so Book Vaults is really trying to, um, is to put, books and publishing into the nft space essentially and we think that this is the best way to really overcome some of the kind of decline in in royalties and advances and a general just connection between an author and fans which has started to really develop in publishing i think the for all the benefits of the kindle on you know limited streaming service it has essentially um i think kind of devalued the writing to an extent and you know, we haven't even discussed it. For, for example, if you lose your Kindle or if, you, if Amazon for whatever reason was to go down or um, there were problems with it, then you don't really own the ebook. It's it's kind of Amazon's property that you just rent. And so it's kind of, you know, people just accepted this as being the digital world of books. And I think we both wanted to really address that and give some authors control over their product and some ownership. So we're looking to really readdress that balance. We want to give authors, you know, 80% of, of sales on these tokens, and we want them to uh, have different packages available for what they want to, um, what they want to do with their own books. And through that, you know, the authors we're targeting specifically indie authors, uh, independent publishing houses who are great at developing that relationship anyway between readers and, and sorry, fans and authors just to use that you know authors have great platforms at the moment and they can speak to their their readers far better than they could have done even five years ago so it's putting all this together and saying let's just give authors the chance to do that we'll create the um the content that they want we can enhance it with all kinds of different visual effects and illustrations and and chapters and um you know plot points and then we'll just put the two together and we'll we'll start to kind of publish books in this format yeah and then and then that that also leads us to the blockchain which is the perfect te technology for this because it basically just increases the proximity between the author basically just empowers the author to go direct to his readership and to cut out those gatekeepers in the middle who currently are taking up 90 percent of basically like you know, all revenues and sales from the author's work. Um, so there's that as well. And something we, we haven't actually spoken about um, so much, Jennifer, is um, also, you know, like our take on, you know, NFTs and like moving it into the consumable space. So we, we see this as like, you know, something which is not just a collector item. It's very much something to be consumed. So something to be bought, to be read. And then it can be kind of like traded or it can be stored or it can be it can be collected. But really, like at our core, what we're trying to do is to take this format and then turn it into something which is consumable. Um, yeah, rather than just a collectible. Yeah. And can you just talk a little bit more about that, that consumption, like for a reader? What does that what does that mean? Um, like, how is like the experience different? Well, I, I guess kind of fundamentally, when you buy a book, it's to read it it's not to you know at its, at its most basic it's it's you buy a book to read it to like consume what's inside of it and then you know then you can put it on your bookshelf or you can sell it or you can trade it or you could gift it to a friend and really like it's only like that you know if we if we kind of understand the true utility we come from like a utility first kind of perspective that 
you know, we can actually create this format that has its place next to, for instance, a Kindle or a standard book. And that's really like, you know, the essence of a book is its readability. And like, we just don't want to lose that, that aspect. We don't want to be all about just the, all about just kind of creating something to be collected. Yeah, it sounds like we might just be trying to just carve up an author's work and put a video in and, and add all kinds of tricks and stuff to to try and, um, you know, make something different and, and say it's special. But I think that obviously we're focusing primarily on the readability of it, how it looks in, uh, and, you know, hopefully we can get to the stage where we actually develop a reader for this kind of work. And um, we can really enhance how that, how that consumption takes place but I think for now you know it's just about making sure that um the book itself looks looks great looks readable um to a really high standard and then we can add on these other parts as well uh, when authors request it it almost feels like the initial part is to make it more like a collectible, like something you want to kind of have in your wallet or on your profile. And kind of the next step is to get people really interested um, in book NFTs and then making it you know, a very you know, consumable product. I mean, you, I know that you guys have made it you know, a very uh, delightful experience actually you know, to actually you know, like see um, those uh, they'll, they'll read those books but it almost seems that there like it's kind of there's you know kind of this process where you are making it you no know, very like you no know, almost like a collectible item but like eventually you know that collectible item kind of in inspires more people to like want to read and want to be part of that experience yeah I do, and um yeah i do think we want to shy away from that side of it either you know i think that for, for indie public for indie authors that are um getting into this space and growing you know we we want obviously that that nft kind of excitement to really bring nft collectors to authors that's the whole kind of that's one of the attractions of this is that we think that in the same way that you know podcast listeners are now moving across to audiobook it's just about mediums that you can tap into and then bring them to the publishing world because we you know we want to keep primarily we want we want to improve and update the publishing world and the authors and how they react to it so we don't want to, yeah, we definitely want to encourage that. And we, we want to stress that, you know, there is this resale element to these books and that they, you know, this hasn't been done before. So it is exciting. You know, Robinson Crusoe, we picked it because it was the first novel in in, the, in its day. It's considered the first novel format. We wanted to just use that because we think this is a new format. It's the start of a new format developing. So uh, we want people to see that value as well. Um, but we we want to stress also that it is about author uh, control in this matter and and having their relationship with with readers develop and just increasing their readership through this new new um, this new format. We don't know how it's going to cross over, but we want to give it a go and bring in those NFT collectible fans, that new market. We want to bring them into publishing, and, and we think this is the best way to do it because. Like you said, in audio and uh, podcasts, they've all come across to audiobooks now. So why can't it work in this way as well? Awesome. And I know that you guys, so hello, everyone. Um, welcome to the future of ebook NFTs with Book Vault and Mintgate. Um, and also, uh, we really encourage you guys to follow Book Vault as well. They actually just launched their first book um, NFT. Anyone who does um, end up winning the auction will get access to a copy of Robinson Crusoe. And I know that you guys had no first launch that, no, that first NFT. Like, what was the experience like? And what do you guys think you guys will do differently in the next launch? Well, to be honest, it's just a massive learning curve. And like, <laughs> as you've so Jennifer, I just want to take this moment as well to say thanks so much for like, you know, helping us through this kind of like, you know, being, being that like, you know, we've just learned so much in the past two months, that learning curve has been so steep, making so many mistakes, as you can probably tell Jennifer with all these kind of like minting and burning and minting and burning of like various test, like test ones. Um, so yeah, there's been a lot of like learning how, how this works, you know, learning the difference between all the different like uh, blockchains, the ecosystems, the protocols, you know, like, for instance, Ethereum versus Polygon. 
Um, so yeah, I, I just say it's kind of like, you know, it's just one big learning curve and we're kind of getting to the point now where we feel like, yeah, okay, we, we understand the ecosystem. We've got a good idea of like, you know, what will work, what won't work. I think also, you know, for instance, even until two, three days ago, I mean, our plan was to mint on Polygon and then we realized that we can actually launch an auction on it. <laughs> you know, it's like a day before your launch, you're like, oh, right, okay. And then like everyone's telling us, well, you know, your first auction or your first, your the first NFT you create, you should really do Ethereum. So had a kind of last minute change on that. So, you know, once again, it's just kind of like, it's fun. It's exciting. It's kind of like, you know, we learn as we go along and even like, you know, this space is just changing so rapidly that it's really exciting to be part of it. And what's really funny about that, I'm really surprised that someone had told you like your first NFT should be on Ethereum, because I think everyone is starting to form different opinions on how to do things on the blockchain, like how to mint NFTs, where to mint them. It's almost like there was kind of a standard at one point, like everyone was minting on a certain platform or on a certain blockchain. But I think that now everyone's trying to start to form their own opinions because there's so many di different platforms, there's so many different blockchains on the, uh, on, um, so I think like definitely experiment with a lot of different, like different blockchains and lift different platforms just because I think that you'll, you, you'll like run into different audiences, you run into different people, um, as well as I think like your authors might have different preferences as well. Uh, for example, um, if you were to tell me like authors why make sure that people know aren't paying as much gas fees, I definitely recommend you Polygon. But no, if they're more uh, caring about their uh, like reputation and making sure that their first NFT is like kind of a lot of blue chip blockchain than on Ethereum. But it's very interesting how you know, people have kind of formed their own opinions. I, I would say like when you uh, minted your first NFT on Polygon, like I did, that that did not come across to me as like, uh, as a big red flag, you guys should have minted on Ethereum. So like, that that's like my, like, so I have a different opinion, right? So uh, I, yeah, like that's really crazy. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not, That's really crazy. We're, we're, we're not blaming you. And I, I think, like, you know, we we want, like, we see us ourselves building this long term on Polygon because it just makes more sense, especially if you, like, compare the economics of a book where, you know, if you want to be, if you want to sell an NFT book for, let's say, five, ten dollars, you know, you can't do that on Ethereum, but you can on Polygon. So that, and also, you know, you mentioned it as well, like, let's be honest, the whole kind of, like, blockchain space it's pretty scary space especially for someone who knows nothing about it so we kind of see our role at least initially as well as kind of you know navigating authors through this you know through this new technology you know walking like walking them through it helping them publish helping them understand you know like what's right for them and you know like this is I mean it's still something which you know I think let's be honest everyone's getting to grips with and you know, I think that's a big value add as well, which we can give authors. It's kind of like, okay, explaining like all these mistakes which we're making right now, where we're doing it for the benefit of our, our future authors. You guys are doing a really good job. I would give you guys credit for, you know, thinking of you know, this use case and you know, just like tackling it and just seeing like what you can, what you can build. Like I said, I encourage everyone to follow Book Vaults on Twitter. And this is my last question before I kind of open it to the audience. I know you guys have been waiting patiently. Um, I've been listening in for quite a little bit, but I guess like, you know, any upcoming authors that you're onboarding or books that you're going to release soon? Yeah, so actually we have um, we've we've got a few authors in the pipeline who we want to start developing pretty soon. Uh, we're actually going ahead with um, the, uh, the first author who's who's writing at the moment is James Fahey, and he's done a a wonderful sort of fantasy YA series uh, called the Changeling series. So the first book is Isle of Winds, and we're just putting all of those those touches together now for him. And we're hoping to release that uh, shortly, hopefully in the next sort of week or two, once we've got everything ready. But we've, um, I mean, he's been, he's having showed him the Book Vault's website now with all the details, I think he now gets it. But initially he did not get it at all. <laughs> so it's taken that, yeah, a step to get him up to speed. But now that he is, he's so enthusiastic. He's sent in all kinds of different um um, glossaries and descriptions of characters that he's never put out there before so we're really excited to put it all into one space um, and just go from there yeah and then once we've got that one ready 
we'll move forward with um, with the others we've got lined up as well. That's amazing. I almost kind of see you guys creating like a playbook, just kind of like a standard for everyone in the NFT, like in book publishing, like, hey, this is what we learn and hey, this is how you should do it. That's like kind of, I think like that, that's really what's great about being early and being one of the first is just, you know, having that experience. Yeah, it is great to have an author who had never heard of NFTs before now so quickly up to speed with it and seeing the potential of it as well. I think that for me, that was the real breakthrough moment because we've honestly, you know, we've done all the, the work to put it together, but we don't know how authors are going to react really to it. And to find out that the ones we've spoken to so far are, are hugely on board and they can, you know, they have a great following on Instagram and Twitter and they can really see how this is going to work. So I think James even put out to his fans what they would like to see in an NFT version when it was created. So he actually asked them, what should I do for this? And they gave him the feedback. So that's what we want to see really that's the kind of connection we want to build yeah that that's really amazing i would love to like hear one of those conversations when you're talking to an author and just kind of selling this on like nft like you have to be like really a certain type of author to still like just to still like want to try it out um and also yeah i will i think that there's um a couple uh, people who, who will have some questions for you guys. Um, I'll refrain from my last question. I'll refrain from asking you about, you know, how those conversations do like go on. But um, I think one person has a question, so I'll invite them to speak. If you have um, a quick question, I just like, you know, request to speak and then I'll put you on stage. But Third Planet Studio, I think you guys had a question or a comment for Book Vaults. Yeah, hi there. Um, I'm Bianca, uh, one of the owners of Third Planet Studio. And um, this is great to hear you guys doing this uh, with books because I have a cousin of mine. He's a um, psychology uh, psychology, uh, professor and he's got a publisher and he's always producing books. And in the beginning of us uh, starting this company, I remember him, he made a joke about NFTing a book and uh, he had just finished one. So I thought it was a perfect opportunity. But then his publisher, they threw another one at him. But I remember him stating what a terrible deal it is. So and he made a joke about doing the NFTs. So his his aspects are um, his books are for educational and, and school books. But um, the cool part is of it is his wife is an artist. And she usually does the covers and the illustrations on the inside and everything. So it kind of gets gets the best of both worlds over there. And we actually do have an artist on board that um, does have a book out already on Amazon. Oh, wow. And yeah, and he's an artist also. So this is like really, really cool. I wasn't sure if we should have a department doing it, but knowing that there is an actual source for to direct these type of artists or authors too is quite amazing but um yeah sounds great we'd love to yeah speak more um after the show but i think like i was i think i alluded to the the kind of academic space education space i think is really interesting for this because it's been i think the people i know in academic who you know publish journals and stuff and, and essays they really just say that it's basically them and their parents who read the journal um, which is quite it's quite a depressing state but I think that you know NFTing these kind of editions and bringing that kind of scholarly overview of a piece of work you know and adding in like a preface or just a just a description at the start of it can enhance that work and um, bring it into yeah like a new readership hopefully so that sounds great. I guess one of the questions is, uh, you know, most students would buy the book and then not need it again after that. So I would see that as boosting secondary sales where they're selling it to the next round of students. But um, what happens when the book gets too expensive for the students to afford, (laughs) you know, because value, I guess uh, I didn't think about that until just now. No, that, I mean that's 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 a really that's a really good question. I mean, like you know, the, the first thing just about the secondary spe- sales is that it creates that aspect, and also, it. Uh, so, I mean, a big thing about student books as well is that they're very easy to, you know, you can generally find a PDF copy somewhere. And, you know, there's generally a PDF copy being sent around the class, so this kind of stops it. And then 
you're right. Then it's just it's just a question about you know who, you know you almost think that the fact that you open it up to market like this should mean that you know the market kind of finds it itself and you know something between supply and demand and it's up to the author as well who can actually instead of the publisher deciding that an academic textbook should cost a hundred hundred pounds or hundred dollars you know it could actually be on the author to you know create a certain amount of supply so that it's actually affordable for 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 the students i don't know there's there's you know it's it's one of those like you could you could speak about this for hours and it's it's still something which we need to figure out ourselves but no for sure awesome thank you yeah, I'm definitely going to keep in touch because uh, we have one book that we have access to already that uh, he I know he would love to mint. And uh, yeah, so I'll, I'll hit you up afterwards. Thank you. Awesome. Thanks, Bianca. Great. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you for the awesome idea and question. Track, I think that um, you had a question as well. Yes. Yes, I did. How's everybody going? Uh, my name is Track. Um, I'm actually a music producer and I'm pretty new. Um, you know, I have a friend who's pretty deep in, in NFTs and DeFi. And, and so I've just last week's kind of been uh, jumping in, but this, I saw this popped up, uh, pop up on my timeline and is, it's really interesting. Uh, my, my girlfriend, she is a, um, uh, she's a doctor, a child therapist and has been talking about publishing for a long time and just hasn't, uh, found an avenue that would kind of suit her ideas. And this, this, uh, this seems to lend itself a little bit more to what she's trying to do. Um, and I guess my, coming from a music background and kind of exploring NFTs over the last few weeks and, and kind of seeing what's going on in the space, um, I'm kind of interested in like the, the way that the new mediums, you know, art, music, and now I guess books uh, are, starting to be able to utilize different, um, I mean, I guess become more um, uh, flexible and like music isn't just music. It, it can be videos or art and books can now include, you know, um, different uh, mediums, I guess, to enhance the book experience. So I don't know. Uh, I don't know if I missed it. I came in a little bit late, but uh, just like what types of what types of things are you guys experimenting with um in terms of the release the releases that you're looking at like uh are you including like different content like uh i don't know is the book more um i guess 3d in life where you have art i saw the cover of one of the books where the the water was moving is very interesting but like just the, i guess i'm excited about the the potential of the book seeming more life lifelike i guess you could say yeah like i could not agree with you more and i'm like let's let's uh and actually music is something which yeah so we're, we're thinking about so this is the first thing it's like you know it's augmented books it's how can we push books and like really challenge the concept of what a book is and like push it into you know a new medium sort of thing so not only you know for instance let's say just the physical text so like the you know the, the 300 page book but as you mentioned, you know, the artwork, which is a hologram or even like, you know, a 3D or even an avatar, why not? Which you can actually use in like other, you know, video games or mediums or like video players. Um, at its most basic, you know, like it's, for instance, fantasy novels. How can you include special maps which have never been seen before? Or, you know, like Zoom calls with the author where the purchaser of an NFT book actually has, you know, like every year they can log into a Zoom call and the author will be there for them. So it's like, how can you add these like extra like basically like extra swag on it sort of thing and i mean music is something which we've not you know we've kind of talked about a little bit in the past we haven't done it and if you fancy collaborating on projects i mean this is we absolutely love to love to maybe push push that concept and it was did you say it was your sister who's looking to do this uh it's actually my my fiance she's really interested in in publishing and um yeah, I, I've just been trying to think of different different avenues where where it makes sense. But um, I, you know, I naturally as a, a composer, a scoring composer, and producer, I've I've wanted to kind of lend services somehow to like that augmented reality you're talking about around the books because because of the story, um, you know, soundtracking or light sound design even it's pretty interesting space to see the uh, or to I don't know see what can happen. 
Um, but yeah, I, I'd definitely be interested. I follow you guys, and yeah, we'd love to we chat more about it, it when when we get a chance. I think I think the real the benefit with um, with blockchain for for this collaboration is that the author has such a huge stake of the of the of the re- the royalty and the sale from the start to play with. So with, in terms of like um, you know artists and musicians getting involved in that space. In traditional publishing, you can't really do that because after everyone's taken their cut and the printing costs and everything else, you're barely making you know the, the um, your return as a publisher or as an author. So, what we love about NFT is that you know the author has so much control to play with these new projects. So, for sure, you know we we it's more about really putting talented people in touch with each other and letting them develop you know the rates, and we we want to enhance that and help that kind of transaction go ahead for sure definitely yeah it's it's the same on the music side with the publisher yeah. and the hands in the pot so yeah i, I fully imagine. agree yeah yeah but no thank you thank you for this uh conversation it's very dope awesome. thanks Great. a lot for your question thank you mm-hmm. thank you track does anyone else have any questions you can request to speak and i can bring you up on stage Awesome. I think that it looks like no one else has any other questions. Um, as I mentioned, I would encourage everyone to follow Book Vault, which is one of the first you know, NFT uh, book publishers. And I think Mars and James, kind of like closing statements. Um, I would say, like, you know, any other thoughts or any other points you guys wanted to mention? Well, before maybe just before that just want to say like a big thank you um to you jennifer and like mint gate in particular like i think the way you've been so approachable you've been a pleasure to work with and also you know it's um you know what you guys are doing as well actually you're the only guys who've actually allowed us to basically publish a novel end to end on the blockchain through your through your um um basically your gated links or your, your way of being able to gate content through the blockchain, which actually makes this format possible. So I just want to say thank you for that. And if anyone's actually thinking of doing a project, like you guys are fantastic to work with. Um, and just on that as well, I mean, what we've seen today with you know <laughs> different people from different kind of projects and stuff like this space is so collaborative that, you know, we've got traditional authors, but really what excites us is just pushing that concept. And if anyone wants to, you know, get involved or try a project or do anything in any sort of way, like, you know, we're just down to try new things, like mint new things, like try different blockchains, like just kind of, you know, we're still learning and we're, we're, we're still new to this space. So, yeah, just get in touch and we want to work with as many different people as we can. Yeah, I can't be that. <laughs> I completely agree. Thank you, Jennifer. Yeah, thank you so much for utilizing Mintgate. And yeah, that's really the point of us, our project is just being able to, you know, allow projects like yours to really think about different possibilities and different utility use cases for NFTs. And I mentioned unlockable content a couple of times because that's kind of how Mintgate does it is you can gate content in this uh, context and you can gate like a PDF of a book um, with an NFT. So ideally, someone um, could you know, buy an NFT behind it. There would just be a book behind it. But I think you know, we enable the possibilities. I think like unlockable we'll enable other possibilities, right? Like you mentioned, um, you can add like a Zoom call to behind the NFT. Um, you can add illustrations, um, like song, like music or videos um, behind it. So really, the author kind of get like, has possibilities. Uh, also, like monetizing on other content that they normally you know have never been able to monetize um, because they've always been you no know, focus on books. And also, I really like the idea that you mentioned how the book becomes more than just um, something that you read, but it could also include you no know, other content that we haven't just you know had we haven't you know, associated with books because there hasn't really been easy medium to create those experiences. Yeah, and just, just quickly to add to that, Jennifer, it uh, just occurred to me that so many authors, when they write, you know, they have, they're heavily edited as well by publishing houses. So I've had, you know, James Faye, I mentioned earlier, he just mentioned how he wanted to include things that he hadn't had the chance to do before because of those limitations on the length of a book or, or whatever. So you know there's all of this other stuff but yeah in the traditional space 
that's just a huge plus for authors as well. So it's just combining those two, I think, that so much potential. Awesome. And with that, like, if you could onboard any author in the world, who would that be? I I think, to be honest, someone maybe like Neil Gaiman would fit, um, you know, if he's listening, <laughs> uh, you know, someone who, yeah, there's so much like uh, American Gods was, you know, a favorite of mine. And just the idea of not only creating these illustrations of these characters and making them you know 3d and you know introducing each one per chapter with a video or something like that you know you could really enhance the story to that with a huge amount of um of different mediums at play and, and music as well so um you know someone i think like that would be would be great Amazing. We've just got to at mention him on Twitter across all the platforms, make sure he knows about you guys. We'll spam him. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like actually in in an NFT where how you spam someone is actually you find their Ethereum wallet address and then just send, send them a random NFT. That's how you spam someone. <laughs> okay. In yeah, we'll do that. It, it does happen because I think that Elon Musk and I think you no know, but uh, Vitalik's wallet addresses are publicly available, so people just like spent, uh, sent them random like NFTs, random like fake like uh, fake Doge coins and all that. So uh, it does happen. So you just gotta you know uh, just find his wallet address. You know if he does have one, he might not have one, uh, and just send those you know NFTs and those uh, Doge coins over. He'll be hearing from us very shortly. Thank, <laughs> thank you, Jennifer, for that. <laughs> Awesome. Well, any everyone, um, does anyone have any other questions or last comments for Marius and James of Book Bolts? Great. Awesome. So I did see, uh, Marius and James, that your DMs are not open. So you guys definitely should open them up. And then um, if you guys have any other questions, I definitely reach out to Book Vaults directly um, or to Mintgate. I know we can also connect them, connect you to them as well. But this recording of this um, conversation, at least you know, without the questions, uh, will be posted, well, will uh, be available. Um, so just be on the lookout for that as well. I literally just changed that. Thanks for, <laughs> thanks, for, uh, thanks, for sharing, thanks for telling us about that, Jennifer. Uh, yeah, anyone can message us, including, and anyone can send us free NFTs as well. We wouldn't say no to that. Yes, <laughs> yeah, put, post your wallet address on, yeah, you can actually find their wallet address on OpenSea. So, yeah, send, send any new, send any uh, NFTs, any Dogecoins, any other uh, influencer coins over. <laughs> cool. And I mean, if, I mean, bit of, yeah, just kind of, we've, we've so, We've just um, launched the Robinson Crusoe book up for auction um, for the NFT book. Um, and so, yeah, if anyone has any kind of thoughts or advice or anyone wants to check it out, just let us know. Um, and yeah, feel free to, yeah, once again, just feel free to contact us. We're, we're open. Thank you, Morris and James, for joining the Twitter space with Mintgate. And thank you, everyone, for joining as well. We'll speak to everyone soon. Thanks, Jennifer. Thanks, everyone, as well. Thanks so much, Jennifer. Take care. Thank everyone. Have a good night. Bye. Bye.